Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's webcast entitled Virtual Partners in Technology. Uh, I'm Mark Sidney, and I'll be your moderator for today. Uh, today's webcast is being recorded, and in the unlikely event that technical issues arise, uh, it will be available to view later today using the same link. Uh, before we get started, I just want to point out the interactive features of the webcast player you are currently using. Uh, next to the timeline, you'll notice a speech bubble. That's the Ask a Question button. Uh, if you'd like to pose a question or comment at any time during the webcast, just click on the speech bubble, fill out the form and click send, and we'll take your questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, there may be opportunities for questions through the presentation, we'll see. Uh, I encourage you to provide your name and email address along with your question or comment. Uh, that way, if we don't get to it during today's session, we can follow up later. Um, I'm going to pass over now to Chris. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon in unusual circumstances, to say the least. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that we meet today virtually uh, on traditional Aboriginal lands, and I'd like to pay, pay my respects to Elders past and present, and for anybody who's virtually in the Aboriginal community here today, um, I, pass those ex uh, I extend those respects to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders uh, watching this cast. Um, so, as Mark said, uh, this is our first virtual Partners in Technology uh, session. I don't believe it's going to be our last, so we're going to do what we can do today to turn this into a new normal. So what we would really like to have from everybody watching is that you are um, actively participating and asking questions that we can actually go through. So it's not just all talk and that we can actually get some information back to you, our audience, on how we're going to work together through this very difficult pandemic period. Uh, so, firstly, um, I am new into the role, so I thought it might be worthwhile just doing a brief introduction on myself and uh, why the role of the Chief Customer and Digital Officer has actually been created in Queensland, and I suppose how it's needed to pivot now that we're in this pandemic environment. So firstly, I'm a Queenslander by birth, and very proudly so. Uh, um, I have worked in private and public sector in Queensland uh, for most of my career, but around about seven to eight years ago, I moved down to New South Wales, where I was really fortunate to be involved in a what I consider to be a very transformative government action about moving towards a higher level of customer service delivery uh, of government. So really bringing the customer to the centre of everything we do. Now, um, over the years, uh, New South Wales has become the leader in that space. Um, but very much so, Queensland is looking to accelerate its movement to really become a customer-centric government and to use technology in a way that really helps us deliver better services um, to citizens now and businesses in Queensland. Now, there's, there's nothing more important in this time of pandemic uh, than being able to deliver really, really high quality, essential customer services that are really, really specif um, delivered well through the digital channel. Now that doesn't mean that we stop using the, uh, the telephone and face-to-face -face channels, they're just much more difficult to do so. So really what we're, we're seeking to do in the short term is pivot all of our activities to seeing how we can actually deliver great customer services um, to our citizens and our businesses with your support using the digital channel as the primary channel. Um, now, all my other activities that we were looking at doing around changing of governance, um, uh, making sure that the investment decisions that we're making around digital, um, working with the, the digital and technology community, industry community in Queensland and around um, the state, around the country and around the globe is a priority. Um, those things have faded a little bit into the background. They don't disappear, mind you, because the machinations of government still need to continue. But we will be um, modifying all of our efforts to support citizens and businesses in Queensland. And that's what I think we'll focus a lot on today in terms of um, dealing with the COVID situation. Um, I, I also wanted to say that uh, this will not uh, be um, the way we work indefinitely. We will return to a normal activity uh, at some stage depending on how well we can actually control that. So a couple of things I'd also like to point out, please pay attention to um, both state and federal advice on 
health management, um, the, the requirements for, uh, for distancing during this process. Uh, the more that we can actually do to limit the extent of uh, COVID-19, the quicker we'll be able to get back into an environment where we can um, do all those things, recover all those um, personal uh, freedoms that, that have had to be suspended in, in this time. So make sure you're looking at the most current information across qld.gov.au and australia.gov.au for all the most current advice on COVID-19. Um, so uh, really what I'm looking to do today is talk a little bit more about um, how partners in technology, virtual or otherwise, can actually help with government maintaining essential services and how we're actually able to um, change the way that we do, we've been doing things in the past to respond to an environment that we've never had to deal with before. Um, the move from government services with the primacy of face-to-face -face and telephone um, as, as always uh, an alternative to digital is becoming more and more difficult under the circumstances. So having these great digital channels is really becoming a prime concern of government and um, government is actually coming from uh, probably a position further behind than we would hope to. So we're really looking for industry to help us partner in how we can actually deliver those things out. That being said, um, many of the things that we were doing before working with partners have had to be deprioritised um, so that we can actually make sure that we're delivering those essential services to customers. So there is both opportunity and problem that we're actually going to have to deal with as a community over the next period up to and maybe even beyond six months. So it's, it's important that we have a channel that we can use together to collaborate on how we can actually make sure that we can get the best out of what we've got to work with right now. Um, now, uh, government is really uh, focused on health, on economic outcomes, on social um, uh, well-being for, for citizens of, and businesses in Queensland, uh, and economic stimulus where we can support it as well. And I think that's an area where we want to be able to talk about today. Um, we're, we're looking at um, what we can do within the current environment to support um, small to medium businesses in the digital and technology space especially, uh, them continuing to do work with government with a focus on uh, digital delivery of critical services uh, to citizens and businesses. Now, we want that to be uh, fairly uh, uh, well directed. So uh, we've had lots of uh, um, people coming to us with opportunities for uh, undertaking digital services with government. Uh, lots of really good ideas and please uh, keep those ideas coming. But we are looking at how we need to prioritise those services and we are talking about a few things that are really coming to the fore. Um, so what I would ask of the community is, is that please keep those ideas about where you believe you can help coming, but also um, listen to what we're saying in terms of what's most important right now. Um, we will be working very much with the federal authorities and other states to make sure that we can line uh, services up like this, um, but we really need to make sure that we're delivering where um, the citizens and businesses need those things most. And currently, we are talking about areas that, uh, that are coming up really urgently now. Now, this will change over the period, but here's a few things for you to start thinking about now. In the area of cyber security, uh, we're seeing that there are significant um, opportunities for um, bad actors to take advantage of remote working, to take advantage of a much higher uh, uh, prevalence of links that are asking people to be followed. So we are looking at how we can actually support um, better cyber security within government, um, better cyber security at, at all levels, local government, state levels and federal levels, uh, and how we can actually extend some of those capabilities out into the community, so the citizens and businesses, to help protect them in periods where they're going to be more vulnerable. 
Uh, another area that we're really looking at too is how we can actually uh, speed up and make better those new COVID-19 related uh, digital transactions. So there is a number of economic stimuluses, rent relief, um, areas such as uh, you know, payments to citizens, uh, payments to businesses, um, reductions in payroll taxes, uh, and there'll be many more that actually occur over the next uh, few months. Uh, so what we want to be able to do, government is responsible for the service delivery of most of those transactions with the federal government taking on some of the bigger ones like you know, the Medicare and the Centrelink type payments. But government, state government actually delivers the, the vast bulk of customer and business facing transactions. We are looking to really speed up our capability in that space. So we are looking at uh, accelerators, frameworks, capabilities. Uh, from the SME market specifically, uh, but other markets in general, uh, around how we can actually deliver more services in a shorter period of time, but very importantly, with a customer-centred priority, so that we want customers to be able to get a feel for what they can trust within digital service delivery in Queensland and get that experience to be consistent. So there are aspects of identity and payment platforms and transactional flow that we'd like to keep consistent. So it does also, one call that I would make to the, to the community is that, um, that we put aside some of those aspects of the competitive nature of our business and work as a cohort to deliver to the citizens and businesses of Queensland first. So that often means working in coalitions that might not exist in other times. So please consider that in your approaches coming through to us. Uh, a third area I'd like to highlight for today is that aspect of remote working and, and remote um, other aspects like remote health and remote education. Um, there are enormous uh, demands being placed on government, on infrastructure, on service providers currently right now to scale up um, the ability for, uh, for agencies, for businesses, for health professionals and education professionals to all deliver services to maintain the operations of Australia and Queensland, um, but without that face-to-face -face channel that's become such a strong part of the delivery of these services. We really need to look at who can provide support and assistance in ways of working that we can turn into a new norm so that um, workers within government can collaborate better uh, both within their agencies and across their agencies, how we can share information um, that traditionally is blocked because of you know, historic controls around or historic agency type borders, um, how we can actually work with citizens to understand what their needs are more directly by having them be able to, commit, to collaborate with us more directly. Um, and also industry, how can you actually provide input to us on what's needed for you both to continue your operations so that we have a viable industry on the other side of COVID-19, but also how you can actually contribute to the maintenance of essential government services right now. And that is, a, I think, a challenge that um, is going to be a really hard one for us to, to um, resolve over the next period. Now, I know that probably lots of people are writing questions about that right now, so hopefully we can get some great stuff on the end to that. Um, I, I also want to really talk about one other area that I think is going to be um, a significant one for us as we uh, go deeper and deeper into the timing that we're all working individually. Uh, so I'm really looking at those aspects of how we keep up um, the, the feel of community, um, how we keep personal contact in that space. Uh, I think that we will rapidly become isolated, it can rapidly uh, impact on our mental health. There are aspects of working um, in a remote and a digital way that sort of take away the normal boundaries of being at work and being at home as well. So uh, how do we re-establish those things that make working normal again, even though we're in a not normal situation? So how do we create a new norm that allows us to have some social interaction um, some quiet time, some, you know, some capabilities in uh, relaxing when we can't do those things that we normally do, such as 
you know, going to watch a rugby league game or an AFL game or a soccer game or going to watch the tennis or even, you know, just doing those things like shopping for fun. Uh, those, those things are um, restricted to us now and um, I think the uh, ability for us to collaborate effectively together across all different aspects is going to be quite a significant challenge for us to go forward. Um, so uh, they're, the, they're the kind of key topic areas that um, I wanted to talk about and as I said I'm very interested to hear from the different areas of the, the digital industry community on how we can actually join up. Um, joining up is a theme that I've got uh, in Queensland government now how we stop acting like agencies and how we start acting like one Queensland government. Um, how our people need to be responsive to the needs that are highest on the day and in the period um, rather than being bound to what we believe is our normal place uh, in, in the environment. And I would challenge you all to extend that thinking into your own areas. How do we actually work as one body that uh, is focused on providing outcomes to citizens and businesses. So given that, um, I might see if we want to open up to a few questions and then maybe we can do some deeper dives into some of the topic areas as the questions arise. So Mark? Yeah, that's, um, we've had a couple of questions come through, Chris. Um, most of the questions at this stage have been about procurement and uh, it's what's happening with regard to small to medium enterprise and I guess uh, those businesses, but um, probably there one of the fastest questions is: Will government use this platform, the one we're using right now, um, for other purposes, um, for example, procurement activities and RFQ type? Yeah. So um, again, thank you for the for the great questions. Um, so knowing that uh, procurement has been one of the key reasons why this forum exists in the physical sense. Um, it makes sense that it's going to continue into the virtual space. Now, uh, thank you for the question because I really didn't speak enough about that in my opening remarks. Um, procurement is one of those areas that we, uh, need, we know we need to actually modify as a result of COVID-19 responses. We can't have our traditional long-running, high-effort um, RFQ, RFI processes that are going on we will really need to um, modify those processes within this COVID bubble. And I, I do call out that we are looking at relaxing procurements and moving into quite direct negotiations in, in a lot of cases so that we can get the outcomes really fast. Um, we believe that we need to be really fast in delivering outcomes because otherwise they'll lose their value. We need to make sure that procurement is not a barrier to outcomes being delivered to um, customers and uh, both businesses and citizens in Queensland. So this will be an opportunity and as I said we talked about a few things, um, cyber security, productivity and collaboration and remote working controls and digital transaction delivery are areas that we really want to start to ramp up on now. So take that as the cue for understanding how you might be able to support uh, Queensland government in rapid delivery of these type of uh, services and we are already talking to some areas within the digital industry about how we can get those um, services fast-tracked but we welcome additional um, re uh, information coming from this forum. Um, the next one is, is will we actually continue to use this as a mechanism for releasing specific requirements to the market? And I think the answer to that is yes. Um, we're looking to forecast these every couple of weeks um, and we'll be calling out some things we need to do and calling out how we want people to respond to us. Um, it is also, uh, I think, um, very important to note that what we're actually doing when we're accelerating is we're putting other things at risk. So we're putting uh, things at risk such as how level the playing field is on these things. Um, what What's... Um, normal value these things would represent. Um, so expediency is taking up a very large part of what we're doing here now. Um, now that can't last forever so I, again I just want to say that we are modifying processes and looking at different ways of doing things 
to ensure rapid delivery of those most essential things, both for the protection and continuance of government services, but also for delivery of those services to, uh, to citizens and businesses. Um, so, again, a little bit more on this space. Uh, we will, from time to time, ask for specific things. Um, we will go to um, particular vendors in some cases, but we would also want those vendors to reach out to other um, partners that they have, small, medium businesses, to come back to us with coalition responses, uh, to come back to us with uh, opportunities for um, doing things that uh, are normally done by government to be done by parts of the digital and ICT industry. So again, I will put a, uh, like a circle around it saying we will want to resume normal operations at a point to be determined. But as it stands right now, we don't know how long this crisis is going to last or, in fact, how bad it's going to get. So um, our view is we should um, prepare for the worst and hope for the best in this space. But procurement um, will be massively truncated during this process. And our um, requirements of you as the digital and ICT industry will be much more direct. Um, but as I said at the very start, I think it is still worthwhile for um, good ideas to come forward to us. Uh, we will assess those ideas, but please don't take it as a complete affront if we are very slow to get back to you or, or we are actually in fact not getting back for, you per for periods of time. It is because we are focused um, day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute on what's most important um, for the ongoing operations of government. So thank you. Um, Chris, I think there was one other topic on procurement which I'm not sure you've touched on, um, to, I guess, to the satisfaction of the person asking the question. It was about the different engagement pathways um, that the government will be looking at for prioritised projects. And I think you sort of touched on that, but you might, if, if there's anything you can elaborate on there. Sure. We, we will be working with um, many of the CIOs uh, across uh, Queensland government, looking at what their most critical priorities are and supporting them more directly. So whereas you may have had lots of vehicles going out to you from individual agencies in the past, I think what you'll see is a much more centralised view of that because we'll also be looking to see who's asking for the same thing. So we'll be looking for themes and how we can actually deliver those services um, more so across government than down the individual verticals. Now, there will still be um, some important priorities within government from outside of the COVID crisis that will still continue. Those processes will carry on as they have done in the past, albeit the focus will, will be somewhat, I think, diminished in those things. So really, only really important ones are likely to keep going now. But the procurement processes that are actually associated with those will still need to maintain the rigour that they've got. Um, but what will be different, I suppose, is the ability for us to have all the resources that we've had in the past to actually apply to those things. So I think from that perspective, unfortunately, there might even be um, a, a position where it's a little bit slower uh, in the normal run the business activities because we're reprioritising key resources in a lot of cases to those things that are urgent and critical on the day through COVID-19. All right, the, the, the questions are coming through a bit faster than they were before. Um, another question on procurement is about uh, leveraging existing arrangements which might be single agency specific but um, obviously capable of being used much broader across the in, entire government spectrum. Uh, yes, so it's all standing arrangements um, will be looked at as a mechanism for accelerating use. That's absolutely uh, correct. We will be doing that. Um, we have had, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this without um, saying it's a requirement, but just saying that this is what has, has actually been put forward to us in some aspects of the digital and ICT industry. There have been people that have said, um, we are really um, wanting to participate in maintaining government services, and there is a very high view that there is a public good interest in a lot of the responses that we've already had from... Uh, our partners in the digital and ICT industry um, who have also put in other proposals about how they can do things at reduced rates um, from a public good or a donation point of view. Um, I think it is worthwhile us considering that there 
while there are um, opportunities to use reduced prices now, there are certain things that are coming down the track, and I can't say for certain what they all are, but um, different tax treatments for volunteered services within this period, um, different opportunities for rebates uh, that have come through as a result of people contributing um, uh, their time and services at, at reduced rates or at other types of uh, arrangements. Um, it, is, it is one of those things that uh, Australians in times of need often just put their hands out and say, what can we do to help? And there has been a large response like that from the digital and ICT community. And uh, it's, it, it is gratefully accepted. Um, but I, I would just say that there are aspects of that that you should also consider for down the track. So make sure that you keep any records of any of those special um, volunteered offers or reduced cost offers to come through to Queensland Government. So if there is a future relief uh, around those things that you've got the right sort of information that says that's how, how it occurred. All right, um, strangely enough, another procurement type question. Um, what about for innovative new players who are currently not, uh, do not have arrangements in place with government but uh, have new ways of solving old, old problems? So um, I've, I've been saying for quite some time that some of the best innovation comes in those times of greatest need and greatest urgency. Um, and often uh, where a minimal viable product is not acceptable in the normal course of business, like, a, uh, like a, a rapid response that is just good enough is often seen as a, an absolute um, gift in times of great need. So uh, specifically if you're actually talking about how you might be able to provide solutions in those areas that we've asked for, please call those ones out. Um, if you have solutions that are uh, across different tangents, and um, let's face it, this is a rapidly emerging situation, and what is important to us is changing on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. So um, please continue to send all of these things through, and the channel through Partners in Technology is a good vehicle for you to actually submit your proposals. But as I said, um, please don't be fully offended or, or think that it's actually because it's not a good idea that we don't respond in the immediate case. We are doing our utmost to prioritise those things that are most essential and we will be calling out from time to time as those priorities change and there may be better timing or better opportunities for some of those different proposals to come through, but they are welcome. Um, they just may not hit the same level of urgency or um, uh, perceived need um, as they might do from the people that are sending them in. All right. Um, depending on how much more questions you'd like to take. We'll keep um, going. Procurement seems to be a, a big topic for us, so I kind of expected that and I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can in the time. All right. And so uh, a couple of people have asked uh, again about bringing, bringing solutions straight to government right now. What is the best, best pathway for them to engage. Now, I, I know you're very busy at the moment, so obviously um, your phone rings pretty hot, but that's not necessarily the best way to get an idea into the wider government. So uh, what, what sort of thoughts do you have on that? Uh, so I said, this, this is a good channel. So um, I have a couple of, I suppose, asks. Now, um, we are working in a disrupted government environment. Um, our parliamentarians are looking to respond to um, their constituents' needs. Our ministers are focused on their portfolios and ensuring that those portfolios can run as effectively as they can um, within a very, very modified environment. So uh, I would ask that um, if we can try and focus uh, the needs of um, digital and ICT community back through the Chief Customer and Digital Office, and this is, as I said, a very good vehicle for commencement of those things. I would much rather um, uh, new initiatives come to me than to be coming through to ministerial offices um, and to parliamentarians, um, because there's quite a lot of translation that can sort of get lost in that sort of uh, approach. Um, it, it is, it is a, an emerging market situation we're in. So the solutions that we're looking for are not the traditional solutions for that we're looking in a normal business arrangement. So um, 
the, the partners in technology, the, the chief customer in digital office is a good way to come through. Um, the, the procurement mechanisms that are actually supported through partners in technology um, would also be great mechanisms. Uh, I'd, maybe another area to go through, please uh, make use of your industry groups. Um, there is uh, like some ministerial advisory panels that are going through. The MICTAC panel is one of those. If you have um, access to any of the membership of those panels, please put forward your ideas to them. They have a more direct channel through to um, our minister especially and, and through our minister back into the priorities within customer and digital office in housing and public works. All right. Uh, another question that's just come in is, um, will the ICT Category Council be resurrected to further interagency collaboration? Uh, really good question. Um, maybe more on notice than an answer straight today. Uh, so there is great value in actually understanding how we actually group together the categories. And uh, I, I think that um, over time maybe we've moved away from that a little bit. Um, the speed and um, agility is probably the areas that I'm looking at more so now rather than the formal categorisation and access controls that have gone on in that further category. Um, if we can actually do things that, uh, that work quickly, if we can get new standing arrangements in place, if we can get new panels that are easily accessible with low friction, I think that's a better value for us right now. Okay, um, a minor pause on procurement questions, which I'm sure you're okay. grateful for. Um, a couple of questions about how government's using Microsoft Teams and other similar platforms for remote working. Uh, so um, what, I'll, what I'll say to the industry straight away is, is that there are an enormous amount of productivity, collaboration, teleconferencing, video conferencing, um, tools and products that are going out. Um, individually in good times where there's always another way to do it, um, that's actually uh, quite a boon. It allows for different ways of working from different agencies for different needs. One of the things that we're seeing highlighted straight away is that uh, it's all very well for a particular agency to have a collaboration function that works well vertically within their organisation. Um, what we are seeing is uh, the difficulty associated with all those different things having to come together in such a way that we can work effectively across government in a non-physical environment. Um, so one of the few things that we have as a relatively common denominator is our Office 365 subscription and uh, Teams within that is a fairly, com um, fairly complete solution that sort of allow allows us to do, you know, presence, um, shared tasks, shared documents, uh, video conferencing, instant messaging. Um, so from that perspective, there's, there's a great opportunity for us to try and unify a little bit on how we actually use tools like Teams. But you know, in other areas, we're still using development tools that are actually sitting in there, the Miros and the Trellos and the Slacks, um, uh, Confluence activities, all those things that are sort of helping us build things. Um, there is, you know, the uh, the Zoom products and there's this, the, uh, the WebEx ones. Uh, there is other private video conferencing, such as the one we're using today, that all are still valuable. But I think the key for us um, working towards a new norm is having a, a, a relatively smaller set of tools that people can use consistently, whether they're in housing and public works, whether they're in health, whether they're in QPS, whether they're in Premier's department, uh, whether they're in Treasury and all of the other departments that are in Queensland. There's many more here in Queensland than there was in my history in New South Wales. Um, but the, uh, the ability for us to work as a government joined up um, needs to be able to be done in a bit more of a constrained way than what we're doing now because we don't want to have um, a return to telephones and emails as the only way that we can collaborate um, during this crisis. So, new ways of working. Yeah, a, a new norm, and I think uh, mm -hmm. so. How can how can we actually take what is um, something that uh, many people, uh, especially many people in the digital and ICT industry, take for granted? Like to me, working from home 
is exactly the same as working from work because there's the tools and mechanisms in place for me to do it. Like, but I, I'm um, very often sitting in situations where people feel very uncomfortable uh, having a video screen up on a, on a, a live um, team session um, because it seems a little bit too creepy. But these will be the new norms. I, I know it's actually much easier to become disconnected from a collaboration on a telephone than it is to become disconnected from a collaboration while you can actually see into somebody's eyes. So um, sharing documents, editing documents together virtually in the same way that we used to push a piece of paper around a table um, in the same way that we used to try and schedule work together, in the same way that we used to stand and um, do brainstorming sessions with post-it notes on, uh, uh, on, a, on a big whiteboard. In fact, um, between some agencies today, Transport and HBW, we had a virtual white, um, brainstorming session that worked really effectively because all the participants were transitioning into this digital way of working. All right, well, I've got basically two more questions to go. Um, one of them is about are we looking at changing the um, financial models? Uh, do, you, do you see that there'll be a shift between OPEX and CAPEX? Um, or if not, will there be an extension of timelines from CAPEX, for example? Yeah, uh, uh, certainly I think the normal cycle of capital expenditure within the periods and things like rollover of capital um, the, the, the nature of the pandemic that we've got now is disrupting many of the normal um, actions that go on within government and capital planning and budget cycle uh, are definitely Im amongst those areas that are disrupted right now. Um, what we're looking at doing is making sure that we can have government continue to operate and that there is sufficient supply to do the things we need to do. Now, there are government agencies right across the sector that are looking at how they prepare a financial position for the COVID-19 response. I know personally that we've done one and we're putting together those aspects that we can currently conceive of that are actually going to be extraordinary expenses that we didn't plan on having but are absolutely necessary for what we need to do to get through the COVID-19 pandemic. Every area of government is doing that and as such um, we will be looking at how we need to respond to the financial environment to make sure that we maintain the financial accountability that we as public servants are bound to but also that we can be flexible to look at what's the response of need so um, those aspects of switching between capital and operating so situations where we might have actually bought equipment for things we're actually just going to use virtualized or cloud based solutions for all those things um, that's that's absolutely likely to happen. I know that we've moved some physical loads onto cloud-based solutions already out of uh, government in different areas. I can see that happening as the need for elasticity increases. Um, all as a service models, whether it's storage, network, um, firewall, uh, collaboration, desktop, um, infrastructure, platform, software, all of those as a service things uh, are likely to get an increase, which will obviously mean an increase in operational expenditure over capital. So I, I think the trend is always going in this direction. This will create what I would consider to be a pretty significant blip in expenditure and a switch between those two models. What I can't really forecast right now is whether that would be a position that just holds indefinitely beyond the COVID environment or whether there does need to be, again, a, a change in the way that we're managing our finances um, to go back into what will likely be quite a long recovery period associated with the economy um, and also government. Uh, so there'll, there'll, there'll obviously be things that happen on the other side of COVID that are a completely different response to the ones that are happening during COVID. Okay, and uh, the last question is actually a response to your comment about um, working together. So that's the government and sector working together. Um, and it specifically talks about how we best work when there's a specific challenge. And then if you had any insight today, which you may not have, um, about any challenges that are immediately on the radar, where you think that industry can start thinking about um, how to approach those. Uh, so again, the one that I believe is actually um, most critical to citizens and businesses is that aspect of 
making, um, interacting with government to get all the products and services that um, citizens and businesses are entitled to uh, easy to find and easy to consume. Um, at the moment I can clearly say that there's been a agency led fragmented approach to doing that. Um, what, what I believe is a fantastic opportunity out of what is a terrible um, problem is for us to be able to join up those aspects of identity and transactions so that we are considering the customer as one person dealing with government as one person rather than having the customer needing to find the entry points into the individual agencies. Um, all and any support from the industry on how we can help unify identi identity, how we can actually streamline customer experience such that different agencies can implement their responses to COVID-19 at an, at an agency level, but how the customer can feel and experience a joined up government approach. Um, there are some fantastic capabilities that I've seen in the, uh, the Brisbane and the States market in that space. And uh, we are looking at how we can open up our, uh, our spending to actually bring those people in to swarm these problems. To not treat them linearly like we've done in the past, but swarm them so we can get a whole lot of things out in a really short amount of time. All right, well, that's pretty much all the questions. Um, the, the, there is an undercurrent, and I think you've addressed it, but if you'd like to wrap up on, on how you'd like to see people engage, um, I guess, over the next week or so uh, in response to this um, briefing today. Um, so for the, for the immediate response to this, for the people that have been uh, on, on uh, the webcast, um, please uh, use this opportunity to try and get some of those approaches through. What I'll do is I'll make a commitment that we'll spend some time going through the responses coming through here, pulling out what we've got and seeing how they align to um, the, the, the needs that we're currently forecasting. Um, we will keep a register of all the stuff that comes through here so we won't lose anything and we will have people that can look at that. Um, use those vehicles that I've talked about um, in terms of, you know, the, the, the pit briefings, the MICTAC group, uh, the industry associations, so that there can actually be a filter on some of these ideas. Share them with, share them with colleagues right now. Share, look at how you might actually do this in collaboration with um, other digital and ICT industry partners within here, such that um, you, can, you can actually come up with complete solutions rather than point solutions or part solutions that sit in this space. Um, they're the sort of things that can actually help us. because I there simply is um, not enough capability and capacity within government right now to respond to this without the industry helping us. Um, it's an absolute essential part of our um, response to COVID-19 and we need to work well with you to do it. We, we absolutely acknowledge that government has a responsibility to support the digital and ICT industry during what is um, an otherwise time of probably scarce opportunities for your businesses because there's so many things shut down or diverted. Um, so we want to have a, uh, a thriving and sustainable digital and ICT industry post COVID and we will be working um, with again industry groups and individual areas and, and consortiums of all of you to try and actually make sure that we can keep um, uh, incomes coming into your areas but that being said we need to make sure that we can deliver value in this space and we need to be able to make sure that we can prioritize the needs of citizen and and businesses in that delivery of services all right well um, thank you very much Chris that's the Thanks, um, end wondering. of the questions um, this Broadcast today will be stored as a recording available on this website that you've been to to view the live cast. So um, unless there's anything else, I think we're ready to close up. So uh, just in terms of final thanks, um, there has been uh, like a fantastic response uh, overall from the digital and ICT industry. There has been a fantastic uplift in the capabilities, telco sectors, as a service providers, professional service providers. Um, the, the, uh, the great response that we've had um, and the very altruistic and um, uh, public good response has, has been very much welcomed. Um, 
I look forward to working with uh, the industry in making the best of the situation and getting us to a point where once we're through this, that we have a better understanding and a better trust and a better collaboration amongst ourselves to bind together continuously to keep those customer outcomes, those citizen and business outcomes. You know, the, 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 the role of government is to serve the, the, the citizens and the businesses of Queensland and that's what I would love you to partner with us in doing. So thanks very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.